Welcome, Kayla. Hi. Thank you for having me. It is my pleasure. I know there are a lot of people super excited that you are coming to chat and tell stories. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, lots of sweat fans in my circle. So cool. Stoked. Yeah, I, I didn't uh, ask actually, where are you based? I'm in Philadelphia. Oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, please tell people who you are and what you do. Yeah. Hey, everybody. I'm Kayla and I play drums in Sweat, the band. Um, and Sweat is a sort of a rock band inspired by 60s, 70s, like organ rock and British prog rock uh, with some like power pop and even folk kind of thrown in. We're um, we're doing a thing. So <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I play drums in that band and I sing background vocals. So. Yeah. Um, all of those um, ways of describing sweat sound pretty accurate to me. I think it's uh, the best roller skating music. This, nice. <laughs> yeah, that is it is the summer skate music, um, like big headphones, getting a tan, listening to sweat. That's the way I'm going to spend my summer. Um, and it's um, like musically, I think one of the more, um, I guess, I don't know, challenging or inventive or I don't know. It's just very outside of the box. I don't know who like you group yourself with when you go play different shows and everything, but um yeah, there's just like amazing musical changes halfway through songs that like are so rare for people to write anymore. So it's like delightful, surprising songwriting and great singing. Um, yeah, that's well, thank my... you. Yeah. yeah, it's a uh, it's really a fun band to be in. I mean, it's a fulfilling band to be in too. So, um. I'm glad that it's resonating with people. I'm glad that I'm glad that you're roller skating to it. These are things that we wanted to happen. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Actually, one of my friends asked me to go skating tomorrow. So I'll try to like bring a little speaker and show her skate jams. Um, oh. So when did you first realize that you loved rock music and you wanted to create more of it? Oh, wow. Um, I think I realized I loved it as a kid. I mean, my family would play a lot of 70s rock in the living room and just remember hearing it and knowing at least I wanted to consume it. You know, I didn't know if I'd have any plans of playing it, but I liked the way it made me feel. And so I, I think it just started as a young age. And then I think by the time I was like late high school, I had gone to see um, one of my best friends play in his band. It was just like a rock band, you know, a bunch of guys from my high school. But just seeing him play in that band, I was like, yeah, I think that's something I could do. And anyway, so I think there have been like moments scattered throughout, but um, I think it got instilled at a pretty young age that I knew I wanted to do it. Do you, are there any like particular songs that you heard, like on those family car rides or I don't know, those kinds of moments where you're like, <laughs> I don't know. like for me, I, I think there was like a Billy Idol song that I wouldn't stop singing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think, um, I, I don't know. My dad would just put on like, mixes of of songs and like anytime like call me would come on by blondie like that one seemed to like resonate i like that one a lot and um I'm trying to think if there was like a particular road song or something mm. uh you know lots of led zeppelin and mm -hmm heart and stuff yeah I don't know I'd have to think if there's like if there was one 
song that was really my jam. Uh, well, if it pops in your head, just shout it out. Right. I I definitely remember hearing um, Call Me and having like no idea what it was about, but it was on a like best of the 80s CD. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that it, that definitely stood out to me. Um, especially because like the whole CD was like male singers. So like Blondie having Debbie Harry was like, oh, girl. Um, Cause yeah. I think that was only ever a single or I might have to fact check that, but I don't think it was on a Blondie record, you know, but like you're saying, yeah, it was probably on a compilation of. Yeah. I forget what else that weird CD had on it, but, um, I feel like it had rainbow in the dark by Dio as well. Hmm. So I always felt like piano simply was like a part of rock music. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're in music or a movie soundtrack, what would the movie be about? Um, Man, I wish the band was here to help me with this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sweat would be... Um, an adventure, I think. I don't know if we'd be like searching for something. I, definitely it would take place somehow in like two time periods, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know how we'd get back and forth, but um huh. I don't know about the plot though. I'm trying to think what's happening. Uh maybe a few weird party scenes, but also like mountains and meadows. I don't know. I think we might be a little all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this sounds cool. Some kind of like time rift, mountains and meadows. Hmm. Yeah, maybe not a lot of love stories, but like some friendship stuff or like some solo journeys. Hmm. Okay, this sounds yeah. like a cool movie. Um, off the top of your head, what are like your top two favorite personally? What movies? Yeah, I'm throwing you a curveball. <laughs> curveball. <laughs> um. Uh, hmm. I think like the first movie I was obsessed with was Wizard of Oz. Okay, there is a rift in that. That is a friend adventure, and there are meadows and mountains. So is this like a version yeah. of Wizard of Oz, but it's got a Maybe. soundtrack? <laughs> Maybe that sounds great. Yeah, would, that's a remake of Wizard of Oz. I would like to see. Okay. Oh. Especially if the little red shoes are actually like red roller skates. It should just like skates on a yellow brick, smooth, fresh pavement with no sticks or stones on it at all. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's the yellow brick road, maybe minus the bricks, maybe just yeah. a yellow road. Yeah. <laughs> um, so <laughs> yellow, like tennis court, whatever the rubbery stuff is that they put there. Right. Um, is there another movie that comes to mind? Oh, yeah. Um, hmm. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I'm so bad at narrowing down top top favorites. Um, hmm. I might have to circle back on. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no problem. Um, well, here's like another that's exactly like that. If you could collect any three vinyl records in history, which would you like to have? Um, yeah, well, I'll have to go back to Heart. Uh, I think Little Queen is one of my all time favorites. Um, visually and audibly. I love, um, how like powerful some of the songs are, but then how like kind of like Celtic and folky they get. It, it even those have like their own intensity still, like the the folky songs. Hmm. So that's that's a good one for me. Um, another one would be. Well, okay, this doesn't really. I don't think this reflects like the whole band of Sweat, but this is my one of my personal ones, mm -hmm. which is. Uh, a record called How Big, How Blue, How Beautiful by Florence and the Machine that came out like about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, I think, 
I just like it a lot because I could tell the record was written like all around the same time. Like it feels very like um, kind of like reflective, but like also really big and angsty. Mm. I, I, I like it a lot. And it, it, speaking of videos, it, there's a 45 minute video that kind of came out with the record and it's kind of like an odyssey type journey. Oh um, God. Gotta check that out. And it's pretty cool because I feel like she or they, the band was able to put all of these like big emotions that are on the record into like words and music, but then the the visual side of it really carries like they do all these like dance moves that like I don't know it just sort of like fills out the whole feeling of the record in this cool way so that that was a big one for me when that came out I still revisit it and you know from time to time we'll watch the video of it um that sounds amazing it sounds kind of like a little Kate Bush but I don't know I haven't seen it I'm definitely gonna watch it after yeah. this, so. there is definitely some Kate Bush not yeah, you're right. Bush. I love Kate Bush. So um expressive in so many different ways. But yeah, what's the third album? Um well, I guess I could pick a Kate Bush. I there's a there's a songwriter named Diane Birch and she does sort of like she has this record called Speak a Little Louder and she does sort of hone in on some Kate Bush type like pop moves but also like stevie nicks hmm. uh, kind of stuff and you could tell she was like just obsessed with songwriting in like the 70s and 80s and there's like some indulgent like ballads on there and stuff but also some like i, I guess i'm throwing it in my top three because there's a side of me that kind of likes some dancey stuff like that's like simple drum grooves but with lots of like synths and background vocals and so it's kind of falls into that category <laughs> that um awesome. not really a household name but but a record that I do like so it doesn't need to be a household name and also I just wanted to let like emphasize that this episode is about you Kayla and not necessarily oh. about your band yeah. Sue will come on in a different episode but um, yeah. part of the channel's mission is to uh, illustrate that women are individuals and that like we have different tastes, even when we're in the same band. So express yourself. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, so if you could play a world tour with any three bands alive today, who would you choose? And is there any city you'd like to play most of all? Um, I'm sorry. Every question is... <laughs> Oh, no, wait, this is good. Kidding. No, it's it's making me uh it's making me uh have a focused approach to my music right now. This is cool. Yeah, so well Sweat just went out with a band called Ruby the Hatchet, who I'm sure you're familiar with, maybe. Um and I know I would personally love to go back on the road with them. Um whether it be like East coast again, or if we want to try to do West coast stuff or to your city question, um, maybe even like play somewhere in Europe. I know like both Sue and I, so I'm from the state of California. Mm -hmm. um, Sue's from Switzerland. I, I know we've talked about wanting to play like our home turf, you know, at mm -hmm. some point the band sweat so I think it'd be cool to play I would equally want to play in you know Basel where she's from or go back home and play like San Francisco or LA so um and then I feel like with tour what's important on tour is like the hang you know so I'm trying to think you of cool with these people I know you gotta you gotta be able to hang with them um, I think I might have to bring Heart back around because I know they're touring still. I think they'd have stories, you know, like good and bad. <laughs> so that would be like an interesting way to pass the time. 
Um, I'm a big Heim fan. So I would go on a Heim world tour. <laughs> I think, you know, there might be just enough crossover. We, we could, we could get away with that. So yeah, just. I feel like fans. Yeah. Heart would have so much wisdom. Like you would gain so much of the, like anybody would gain so much just know how from touring with heart. Um, yeah, and Anne and Nancy seem like they have really different personalities. Mm. So I feel like, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I would do it. Definitely do it. Cool, cool. Um, I love that. That sounds great. I hope that you do get to open for Heart one day. I, I feel like you would fit really well for them. We'll have to figure out, like, how do you make that happen? What is the cookie crumb trail to that? Everybody, I'm going to find Hearts Manager's email and I'm going to put it in this <laughs> in this episode description. Send them an email. No, I'm just kidding. There's no way I, I mean, can find it. Is there? I'm going to look for it. Let's look for it. Why not? You might find it, right? Like it's out there somewhere. <laughs> Somebody knows. They're just people. Um, yeah, they're people. They got emails. They just have email addresses and... <laughs> you know, spam folders like the rest of us. Oh, those spam folders. They're always, you know, mixing up opportunities. Okay. So um, looking back, what was a big decision you made that turned out to be a great choice? In music? In your life? Any, any way you want to answer it? Um, well, I... So I switched back to playing drums about five years ago. I was sort of like for maybe 10 years, I was sort of taking a unintentional break from drumming and I was doing a lot of songwriting, like singer songwriter type stuff. So then like 2019, I decided I was like, I'm gonna get a practice space. I'm gonna get a drum kit again. And I started playing and then ended up joining some projects. And that was the right call for me. I think I needed that back in my life. So um, I, I would go with that. Amazing. What about this move? Um, Sweat is in Pittsburgh, right? We're based in Pittsburgh, yeah. Yeah, and you were out in California before. What prompted your big move? Yeah, so I grew up in California and then in my early 20s, um, well, I was in a band with a friend of mine in California, um, Sacramento area, actually, at the time. And him and I were doing a lot of touring as like songwriters, kind of had like a, actually had kind of like an Americana duo going on. And then we decided after doing some touring and whatnot, we're like, well, maybe we want to relocate. And he was from Pittsburgh. So we landed on that. And then I showed up here and then ended up liking it and staying. And, um, you know, I broke off and did sort of like a solo singer songwriter thing for a while and then ended up going back to drums. So, but that's what brought me to Pittsburgh. Huh. just friends yeah. music yeah sounds like it was like a very natural flow and not like a uh like really intense spur of the moment decision or anything like that I mean I there were yeah it was it was a natural flow I think you know it might have been a little jolting for some people in my life at the time but I think it's it's been a a cool life change to like live somewhere else and establish my roots here. And and then I guess you met Sue there. Yeah, I met Sue. Um, yeah, through some people in the music scene here. Um, in well, I knew her kind of 
from around town since maybe like 2018 or something, but then it wasn't until 2020. We were hanging out at a Halloween party outdoors and um, she was telling me how her drummer had left the band and I was just like, well, I play the drums and <laughs> She knew that, but she had already asked me to be in sweat like a year before. Mm -hmm. And I was just not able to do it at the time. And so she's like, well, let's try it out, you know? So then the, the rest is history. Love <laughs> it. Magical. And super yeah. like cute. Um, there's definitely been a couple of girl musicians in my life that uh where we like wanted to play together and it wasn't the right time but like the energy and the vibe is still there where it's like it could have could happen just yeah like the circuits circumstances line up yeah uh, you got to keep those connections open i think yeah and sometimes like when both sides really really do want that to happen happen like the connection can't close because it's like they want it it's just like there's all so much that it takes to do it together Mm -hmm. um so um uh, what is a performance memory that you will never forget um like where i was on stage it can be that or if you feel like it you want to answer it as if you were watching someone else that's fine too whatever comes to mind hmm i was well just this year um sweat was on tour with ruby the hatchet and royal thunder and it was a four-day tour and the second day um the drummer for ruby the hatchet broke his leg and that coincidence it was like wintry and it was snowy that day and icy and coincidentally that night that the show got canceled for us in Baltimore. Um, but we had New York City and Philly to play. And it was sort of up in the air whether we were even going to do it and if we were going to get to do the shows. Um, so after that day off, they decided they were going to keep doing the tour. So we did a show in Brooklyn at St. Vitus that night. Mm -hmm. Um and it just ended up being, I, there was just something kind of special about the audience that night. Like they were really, they were just really owning it. Like they were part of the show because they are like, just a quick reminder that audiences are part of the show. You know, they're not just there to stand there, you know, but they were like so engaged the whole night. Um, and then so I remember being on stage and just like really feeling that like from the audience, it was really cool. Um, and then I remember being in the back of the room that night and watching, well, Royal Thunder was great, but specifically watching Ruby the Hatchet and just the way that they owned like how the show must go on because they ended up doing like kind of an unplugged like acoustic half set of music and then they they brought a friend in to play drums on like five songs to to you know for so the show could go on mm -hmm. um and I just remember standing in the back of the room and kind of like getting chills in this way like that they just did it they just like you know pulled it out of their ass and they you know that that sounds bad but like in a really good way mm -hmm. they just like yeah the show went on and they did a great job and it, I think I'll just you know that seems memorable for me right now and probably I'll remember that for a long time yeah that is amazing actually they could have canceled you know they could have yeah but just like no quit until you know the fat lady sings or whatever that phrase is um yeah and the fact that the audience was just so like forgiving and into it and they didn't you know they just wanted to be part of the show and they were so it was cool yeah it's definitely better like for a band to not cancel the show and like find a way to do it mm -hmm. for the audience especially when it's like a band that you like don't get to see a lot um 
Um, like they canceled this fest in Mexico that I had tickets for and like flew down to Mexico City to see. And then like a couple of the bands decided to just play local bars and clubs. So mm-hmm. if you knew where it was, you just ended up like going o- around in Mexico City to different places to see these bands. And that was pretty cool. So yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's better than the whole thing being canceled. Um, yeah, totally. What is your favorite piece of gear or stage wear? Um, I have this one symbol that I really love. <laughs> it's like kind of a nerdy answer. I just, I got it a couple years ago and it, um, I don't know. I can just get these like specific sounds I want out of it. It's like very versatile because I can like crash or ride on it. Hmm. So, what is it? Uh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Belgian makes it, it's a K Constantinople 22 inch symbol that they make. Um, and I don't know. I just, I like it. I think it's kind of like been a part of the sweat sound in a way. Like I've sort of worked it into the band sound. Um, so I'm digging that right now. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. I know there will be a couple of drummer chicks that are like so excited to hear you answer that in a nerdy way. And a lot of girls will feel like they're not nerdy enough when they answer that question. So it's kind of interesting. Right. Anyone who like watches all of these episodes will like notice these really crazy um, like commonalities between the guests. Mm-hmm. Um, just like, yeah, everybody wonders if it seems to like wonder how much they belong where they are. But I don't know if that's like a gender thing, because I don't watch Mm -hmm. interviews with male musicians, so I'll never know. Yeah. (laughs) Is it all musicians or is it just the female musician? I don't know. Um, As I watch more, I will try to. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. If you notice anything that stands out, please like open the conversation with me because I think it would be really interesting to explore. Um, yeah. So are there any new announcements for us from you? It can be your, just yourself or things about sweat. Um, well, we're writing an album with sweat. Uh, I am working on a few solo songs kind of that have been on the back burner that's exciting trying to bring those to life um yeah I think the biggest thing on my mind is yeah we're just sweats writing a second album and we're self-producing it again so we just booked some studio dates for September and it's going well like it's it's crazy writing the sophomore record because you don't start with songs that you've had in your back pocket you know mm. for years or mm-hmm. something it's sort of like um and it's not gonna be like a concept album but there's definitely some strong themes so I don't know it's cool just like helping arrange some of the songs and like seeing how that's all unfolding and um so that's the biggest thing coming up I don't know when the record will be out you know how that goes but right yeah nobody knows we don't want to we never want this question ever to happen again (laughs) nobody's allowed to ask that question in fact we do have one um thing coming out in the fall which is a Jethro Toll cover that we did for a compilation so that's gonna be our next release that is thrilling okay uh is there flute in this cover so the original song had flute and because of our instrumentation sue ended up doing the flute part on the organ Ooh. so um 
but we did, we took some liberties with the arrangement and we added in some more backing vocals that weren't in the original. So it kind of has this like almost like angelic beginning to the song. I'm so excited for this. So yeah, I, I'm excited for people to hear it. It's funny, we recorded it in August, so it's been a while, but I just listened to it a few weeks back and I was I was like, yeah, I think this is this is gonna be cool for for sweat fans or for new sweat fans or you know. Um Jethro Tull is uh close to my heart because I grew up in the same very old farmhouse that my mom grew up in it was built mm -hmm. in 1799 and i had the same bedroom with the same wood paneling walls the same record player and the same record collection and i loved thick as a brick and i would play it over and over and my mom one day said to me you know I used to play that album over and over just like you. And I have a specific memory of my sister's boyfriend hanging off the side of the house on ropes while he was painting the house white for my dad. Uh -huh. And so I was like, Jethro Tull is like very close to my heart for that reason. And so I'm so excited to hear a Jethro Tull with female vocals and more organ. So because my dad was a pipe organist and he used to play pipe oh, organ wow. in that house. So this is, sounds like a very wonderful thing. I'm as a sweat cool. fan, I am very excited to hear this. Cool. And yeah, I will well, roller skate to it. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, uh, well, that's also, cool. Yeah. I also want to like make a rule right now. Like, you know how like they used to say, like, you can't ask a woman her age. Like you shouldn't ask a lady or her age. We're making a rule. You cannot ask a lady when the next single or album comes out. It's just rude. <laughs> so, um, and as for the next album, do you personally have any like things that you're going to play with, with drums that will be different for you? Um, well, I'll be using a different drum set for this next record which is a minor change I think are you asking like like instrumentally like as far as like auxiliary percussion and stuff am I do I have things in mind or dial or new influences that you've heard since the last album or anything at all um you know I think the second album is getting well, it's getting a little proggier, but it's also, it's somehow getting a little poppier in some spots, like power poppy in spots. So yeah, I feel like from a drummer's perspective, I am kind of with these new songs getting asked by the songs to like, pull out some different styles of playing for sure hmm. and um uh, for for you what would be exemplary power pop um exemplary power pop for me would be like sweet sweet or um some blondie okay um yeah a sweeter sweat <laughs> on a blonde great um uh so where can everyone listen to your music and follow what you do and please be specific about where people could find those future um solo pieces that you're working on sure yeah i mean um you know streaming services right now whatever floats your boat for that would you know mm -hmm. spotify and apple music uh sweat is on there and also kayla skirman songs are on there um instagram is good for both projects uh sweat would be sweat dot the dot band or you know that's our handle and then my handle is just kayla underscore skirman 
And I have a, both of those have like a link tree to everything going on. <laughs> yeah. Um, when Googling sweat the band, it will try to sell you sweat bands. <laughs> yeah. There was also like some accounts that were for like gyms. You know, and it's just, it doesn't even matter what you'd name your band. You could name it like... <laughs> Just thinking of like naming it something that like you shouldn't buy on Google. <laughs> I'm right. Change my band name to like I don't know. I, what are they worried about? Like dartboards <laughs> with like presidential faces glued to them or something. I don't know. That's not a band name. Anyway, it's time for the final I, game. I know where you're going with that. I know where you're going with it. I guess I wouldn't want that to happen to my like people that were interested in the music, but you know it's funny okay betty davis or uh marianne faithful Ooh. um let's do some betty davis yeah she's out there in obscurity right now she's hiding from the world but we can pull her out i actually think she's in pennsylvania somewhere i know she was born in pennsylvania oh well, that's right yeah so she um after uh her music career took a downturn she went into obscurity she didn't want anybody bothering her but i'd like to bother her i'd like to find her send her some flowers yeah maybe we can bother her in ways she didn't expect and it could be delightful and <laughs> yeah we can we show could... up on her front lawn and flash dance one of her songs right i wouldn't yeah. bother her at all um joni mitchell or stevie nicks that's a uh, some good records I think I'm gonna have to say Stevie Nicks. Is it the bird? Why did you pick mm. Stevie? Why did I? Mm -hmm. Well, um, let's see, as much as I love some Joni, I feel like just I I think I just answered for myself like at this time and place in my life. And I think think i'd be digging some stevie you know if i got in the car if i was gonna go out for a run or something just just has a little more kick to it and yeah it's a little darker also yeah i'll i she could like tear my heart open a, in a little different way than Joni. <laughs> yeah Joni mitchell um I mean, she had like her, she got her lumps like really early in life. I don't remember who that boyfriend was that she got tied up with and had the baby that she had to give up for uh, adoption. And then she like regretted it for the rest of her life. But that's where she got all her soul. And then Stevie just had horrible experiences for a very long time with the lewds and the cocaine and everything. So all that band drama. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah, definitely different stuff. Yeah. Did you notice the crystal ball inside of the tambourine? Um, no, but I, I think that's like literally the most Stevie Nicks thing ever. <laughs> that's cool. She's amazing. Yeah, they are definitely. really different. That's like something I definitely miss about living, um, moving from the country to the city even though it's been many years, I miss the countryside drives in the car with the music. Mm -hmm. it's, music is just like kind of best listened to driving down the highway. Yeah. Country yeah. Highway. So Jefferson Airplane or Dolly Parton? Ooh. Well, I guess it depends on my mood, but... um. You know, I love me some Dolly, but hmm. <laughs> man. All right. Let's like make it more intense for you. Yeah. Let's see whose hair's bigger. Oh, I actually <laughs> think Grace won that one. This true. Time, I think that Grace has the bigger hair. All right, let's go biggest hair. Jefferson. All right. Very slick wins this round for having bigger <laughs> and she she became a painter after saying you know you can't be 
What'd she say? You can't be 40 on Sugar Mountain? It was like a ridiculously low number of age. Um, anyway, she became a painter. And I looked at her paintings before the pandemic because I was like, what the heck did Je uh, Grace Slick's paintings look like? And they mm -hmm. were totally awful. They were all about Alice in Wonderland. Oh, no. Like, they were really bad. I'm not saying this because, like, I didn't like that she was painting. I wanted them to be good. But mm -hmm. I looked at them before the pandemic. And for some reason, they blew up during the pandemic. I know that contemporary art blew up during the pandemic. And then they were all unaffordable because the first time I looked, I thought, you know, I feel like I can't afford that. And yeah. I didn't buy one and I am an idiot. You should just buy stuff when you want it. Okay. You know, that's the lesson here, I think. <laughs> I always regret the things I don't buy. So Tina Turner or Patty Smith? Patty Smith. Okay. Why Patty? <laughs> Um, man, I just, uh, I don't know. I just resonate with that. You're like kind of going for the dark songwriters tonight. You know? Yeah. I think I've been going for the dark songwriters for like a long time, <laughs> cool. but you know, it's funny though, because I do like to dance and I do like to let loose a little and light lighten the mood and stuff but i think all right let's let's see the next one <laughs> maybe i'll <laughs> that's probably not that uncommon like i think another thing about this show is that i don't try to stick in one genre of rock or metal because like sometimes you want to hear power pop and sometimes you want to hear like Stevie Nicks's like cocaine blues. Mm -hmm. So I think like sometimes you want to skate to sweat and sometimes you want to like clean your house to something very violent. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, absolutely. Janice or Diane Davidson? <laughs> um, you know what? I, I did have a little Janice Joplin phase. I, I wouldn't mind putting that record on again. Let's do it. Yeah, you know, it's really crazy that um, people, like, didn't think she was good looking to me. Because in every picture of her, she's, like, super fit, wearing a wonderful outfit with a big smile on her face. Like, I don't get it. I don't know why people don't think that she's good looking. She was uh, yeah, look, I mean, the, the smile alone, I think, makes people attractive, right? That's a pretty good smile. She she would flash it in just about every photo. Yeah. Um, a good time, we think. So, or, she, or it was an ironic smile. I don't know. Probably something similar. You know, she, she's maybe not like some pouty supermodel pretty or something, but I'm there's so all, all types of attractive. Yeah, <laughs> and I think she, she was killing that, that is very fair. Yeah, there... Audi is pretty too. You're right. Um, so is it true you know, all your records are female? Yes. I, I do have the whole collection. The whole collection except for that I feel guilty about having. But they're like good ones. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh um Rick, what's the one band called? the band that Jenny Darren ended up working with. Jenny Darren is the woman that launched Nico McBrain's career before he joined uh, Iron Maiden. Um, and she also was the first person to record Heartbreaker before Pat Benatar. Oh. What's the band? The Straubs. Okay, so I have the Straubs, Uriah mm -hmm. Heep, uh, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son, and Rockarola. That's it. Nice aside from like classical music but i um, that's different but yeah Correct. everything else is is um women's work women's work. so kate bush or joan baez oh man um kate bush what? kate bush theater well my school right she's right do you i just came across um 
there's apparently some album of hers that's like super hard to find like it's called a bird in the hand hmm. we're gonna have to like well, and go. it's not streamable and it's barely in print um on vinyl hmm. and so i'm like how am i gonna hear this <laughs> oh we'll find some sleuth okay calling all the nerdy boys that watch this channel out of voyeurism we have a use for you now yeah i, I just i just want to hear it and i don't know why it stopped getting pressed i don't yeah i don't know I think that's really weird also that she wouldn't have it available for streaming. That makes me think that it's some kind of like uh, like royalties or rights issue. Like mm. she's not somebody that wrote something on the album that's like, no, you can't put it on Spotify. Right. Something like that. Yeah. 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 That's pro. I mean, it's probably it because I don't think it's like a matter of her not liking the album or because usually you would need a lot of power to take take it off print in that case hmm. yeah and I feel like she's just you know had such a revitalization of interest mm -hmm. in her music that she would really want to make sure she had everything available um it's kind of like I feel like more people are listening to Coven now than they were a couple years ago, or they're listening to mm -hmm. like a wider range of the discography than they were a couple years ago, thanks to the interweb nets. Good for that. True. Yeah. All hail the overlords. Well, thank you for coming on the show, Kayla. It was super nice. Thank to talk you. To um, Sweat will be sending you an album, by the way. <laughs> totally the oh. silliest yeah I've ever made but I am very excited to have that it will definitely oh. be appearing in the vinyl game yay oh <laughs> yeah cool um I always need more because I I'm like a kind of worried that like people are going to be able to like guess which albums I'm pulling for them at this point maybe maybe not I got a little bit I got a little bit um, but it's always better to buy the vinyl in Europe because it's so much less expensive there. Oh, wow. You Didn't know, know that. Tenth, a tenth of the price there. So, yeah. Cool. Um, thank you so much. Thank um, you. Everyone. Thank you for telling us all about the things that we can look forward to. Thank you for the album. And I cannot wait to hear this Jethro Tull cover. I'm so excited. Well, we're excited to release it. So thank you so much. And uh Hope to chat again sometime soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye.